Jordan rules. Is that something you guys made up? Jordan rules? This is a typical, a typical disgusting display by Rodman, Lambeer, and Isaiah Thomas. The yellow gutless. No, I don't, I don't know what that is. This your boy, JP. Uh, we're looking at the Jordan Wars, uh, the Detroit Pistons secret to stopping MJ. So let's go ahead and get into this video and let's see what the Jordan Wars are. The interpretation of the Jordan rules are this. There are three areas on the floor the Pistons need to be concerned about. He's sensational when he dribbles to his right. He's only great when he goes left. They will force him left as much as possible mm. from the top of the circle area. Which they do. The team at the time. My eyes are telling me. Some Jordan rules going on here. Mm. Let me go write a story about this. Now I just get this. I'm talking about some Jordan rules. We're just playing tough, physical, like anybody else. All right. When Michael Jordan has the ball on the foul line, extended or wing area, he is so good, too good at going baseline, coming back up under the basket, getting fouls on the mm. So instead, the Pistons will force him to come to the middle of the floor off the dribble. You see all the Pistons the colliding they say, what with about the Jordan rules. And they said, what Jordan rules? And they'd say, well, well, what about this defense you're playing on? We're not playing anything special. And they all laughed and they'd wink and then they'd move. Check. They also need to be concerned about pick and roll. They'll trap everyone. And while Michael's doing his thing, just kind of creating, they'll run the next guy at him to double team him no matter who it is. But keep this in mind, Mark. They don't always use the Jordan rule. Oh, mm -hmm. they didn't preach it. They didn't brag about it. But it was on display. Jordan to the foul line. Right. He right. grabs grabbed him. Mm -hmm. the Jordan rules were for <laughs> I love what you know, man. Kind of like extended, post up. The Jordan Wars. Yes! The Jordan Wars. How high can this man fly? Michael Jordan is soaring, and the Chicago Bulls are going right with him. Jordan is averaging 38 points a game in the first two playoff rounds. But now, Superman faces his toughest test. Game one will tell if Detroit's road has been too easy. Mm. While the Bulls come off the biggest win in the history of their franchise. Against Cleveland. Now the Detroit Pistons, um, shout out to them, the bad boy Pistons. They try to beat teams mentally with their game, even though it's kind of physical though, but they were a really smart team. Isaiah Chalmers and Bill M. Bill leading the charge. Dennis Rodman, who could just play any position one through five. They also had um, Rick Mahorn, a great player they had. Um, Vinny Microwave Johnson that can get really hot coming off the bench. Mark Aguirre who was one of the best players in the NBA with the Dallas Mavericks and then coming over to the Detroit Pistons team after getting traded. Uh, the Pistons traded uh, Andre, Adrian Dantley just to bring Mark McGuire on. Um, so yeah, this Detroit Pistons team, they were really tough. They would get after it and they were on a mission because 87 they lost to the Celtics, unfortunately, in the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, 1988, they made it all the way to the finals. They finally beat Boston, but lost to L.A. Uh, with Isaiah Thomas going down with an ankle injury. And a questionable call of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar hitting two free throw shots uh, when they said Bill and Bill fouled him. So... Yeah, 88 wasn't really their year. And then 89, where we're looking at it now, you know, they got the Chicago Bulls, and we'll see what happens. You know, the whole Pistons Jordan rules thing was frustrating as a beat writer because I was covering the team at the time. Mm -hmm. And I would always get this we're talking about some Jordan rules. We're just playing tough, physical, like anybody else. All right, cool. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I'm Ron Musburger, along with Bill Raftery. 
Let's get right to it. The man was an ex-coach. How do you stop Michael Jordan? Uh, there's not much you can do with him. You have to make him go east to Best west in, in the, the NBA fast break. At the time. He's good on the perimeter, but he's great when he penetrates. Mm -hmm. And sometimes teams find themselves watching and in awe of him and maybe uh, bashful about you know, being physical with him. I was in the Detroit Pistons locker room before the game, and it's very obvious they would like to wind this thing up tonight. And while I was down there, Chuck Daly unveiled his final instructions for the players, and I wrote them down for you. Chuck Daly devised it, and his coaches, and uh, it probably is one of the great things that made Chuck Daly the great coach that he was, in everyone's eyes. Mm. Seventh game intensity, he said. Let's play like this is the seventh game. Control the boards, energy, nothing new for the bad boys, he says, intimidate and dominate. And then on the bottom, in big capital letters, it says, follow the Jordan rules. And I said, what are the Jordan rules? And they said simply, when he goes to the bathroom, we all go with him. <laughs> <laughs> there were no secrets. I mean, everybody knew what the rules were, and that was to put him on the floor when he came to the bathroom. Pretty much. Trying to keep him from the crowd-pleasing, um, uh, it's the only way you, you know, can stop him. Fantastic flamboyant plays that he was capable mm -hmm. of making. Michael Jordan, who has done miracle things on the court, trying to carry his team on his shoulders against a great defensive team, maybe one of the greatest defensive teams in recent years in the NBA. And also, um, sorry I keep uh, pausing that, but also Jordan didn't really trust his teammates at that time, so he was like going out there uh, playing like a one-man show with the Chicago Bulls because so Scotty Pippen haven't really developed yet until like the next year and two years from now when they finally started winning championships and Jordan was able to trust teammates and had really good role players around him to finally get over the hump with the Pistons by getting stronger and being able to take the hits mentally and being able to not let anybody uh, take away his goal, which is to win an NBA championship. So, Pistons really motivated MJ to go out there and get stronger and being able to get better and being able to win. And you see him winning them six championships. So, you now shout out to the Pistons. But, yeah, this was a one-man show um, at that time. Jordan has had his marvelous moments, but lately he has been stymied by the Detroit Pistons. They had figured out how to contain Michael Jordan. They had finally figured out, to some degree, how to contain Michael Jordan. There is Michael Jordan and Bill Cartwright. Pistons are in blue, the Bulls are in white. Chicago's ball with John Paxson still showing effects of that swing angle. Let's see the movement now. They try to go down inside to get either Grant or Pippen off early. Here's Grant. Mm. Here comes Isaiah Thomas chugging up for us. Zoot. Quick. So what you had to do is you really had to look at the games. And the Jordan rules were pretty simple. I and mean, there was a couple versions of them. But one, Joe Dumars would guard Michael Jordan. And, uh, and he would um, sometimes be doubled by Dennis Rodman. Mm. Or Joe Dumars would try to you know funnel him left into John Sally or to James Edwards or whatever big guy was there. The idea, the concept, was to get Jordan to pass out or to take difficult shots. Mm. Jordan, good pick from Kippen on the pick and roll. And good block. And a defensive effort from James Edwards. Chased down by Rodman. Down low, Jordan coming around a screen. Gets him into the paint, Lambeer to help out. And great Detroit defense. Michael Jordan. Jordan, short with a shot. Mm. The second part of the... Uh, Jordan rules is that you know you send Joe Dumar somewhere else. All of a sudden, you got six foot seven, six foot eight Dennis Rodman on you, and Dennis Rodman was a physical player, mm -hmm. and he would be hitting Jordan, hitting him, moving his feet, and Jordan didn't like that. He was so smart. Rodman was smart. Steps right inside. He missed the first shot against Rodman. Michael Jordan as the point guard. You can't help that. Pistol a great defensive team. And Jordan was coming in handy. So you had Joe Dumars who probably you know, was, was more compact and just stand in your face and guarding you and funding you somewhere. And now you have Dennis Rodman <laughs> trying to get inside of your head, tapping you. Physical, throwing, throwing that elbow. Yep. He got two different looks. And so when Jordan got accustomed to Rodman, well, here comes Joe again, and now you have the other Jordan rules where you're kind of funneling into traffic. The Detroit Pistons have so many things to 
to think about. I made a list for you. Defense, rebounds, Jordan, 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 Jordan. And the other part of the Jordan rules is very, very simple. Get the ball to whoever Michael was guarding. Make him work on the other end. Mm. If he had to guard Joe, get shots for Joe. If he had to guard Isaiah, God help him. Two seconds, one second. Trying to wear him out. Trying to wear him out. That's more. The Jordan rules is you had to be physical with him. If Jordan got loose, he was going to get hit, and he knew it. Jordan mm. Jordan to the foul line, room in the lane. Way you were going to slow him down to get him to think about what he was doing, you know, coming inside and, and, and jumping in the air was to at least give him the, the, the thought that he could get hurt. The thing about Jordan, which made mm. him great, is he was able to take the pain, take the physical play, and still play his game. Yep. But it was a lot easier for Jordan to do this against other teams than it was for the Pistons. Because other teams said, oh, well, we're going to do the Jordan rules too. But they didn't have the defensive players pull it off like the Pistons did. Max. And so the Pistons in that way were able to at least get in his mind and cause him to, to think about, oh boy, where's Lambeer? You know, where's, <laughs> where's, where's my horn? You know, where, where's Edwards? You know, where's Rodman? He could get hurt. He could get bumped. He could get knocked down at any time. A lot of y'all have been asking me about content creating, what makes a good video. One of the most important things is appearance. If you haven't noticed, my groomment has gotten a lot better and my confidence to make my videos has gotten even better. When I look good, I feel good and I want to give a special thank you to Manscaped. They bring you a below the waist grooming experience like no other with their brand new Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. We're talking about the next generation trimmer that features two interchangeable heads along with the dual LED spotlights. Who knows how to deliver that nothing but net feeling. Did I also mention that this is waterproof as well? What about taking it on the go, JP? Don't worry, Manscaped has you covered. It comes with a travel case and a travel lock feature that will avoid any issues wherever you go. Upgrade your ball trimmer and your appearance will follow by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping by using the code SJP. That's 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com using the code SJP. My balls thank me. Your balls will thank you. Get yours today at Manscaped. Game 7, Crossbow Palace. Piston ball. Flyers on the 6. Back to DuMars. Oh, man. Jordan, good pick from Kippen on the pick and roll. And then a good defense Ooh, good block. from James Edwards. I mean, he's going to score on you no matter what kind of defense you put on him because that's the kind of player he was. Mm -hmm. We just wanted to slow him down and try to double team him a lot and make other people beat us opposed to letting Michael Jordan beat us. The Bulls wanted to get the ball with Jordan on the post. He was forced to come outside and get it. Got a superstar, if you can negate them and let somebody else beat you, that'd be great. If we felt that Bill Cartwright needed to score 40, then Bill Cartwright could score 40. Cartwright. No mm. Good block.
if they didn't have the mental part or that, you know, we're too bullish to believe it's the end, they would have lost that series. They would have lost the game at the Palace. But they were just real bullheaded, stubborn, and uh, resolute about things. And that's why they won that series, despite, I thought Jordan had an excellent series. Uh, been awesome. On the ball, go. There's the end. We'll see you here. Thank you. <laughs> Lambert out. Thomas out. So well, this is the move on, but you really got to feel for this man right here. Well, Bill Johnson said yes. This will be considered a successful season for the Bulls. They went one game harder. For the Pistons, nothing but another world championship will do. And they, the Detroit Pistons, will beat the Portland Trailblazers in the best of seven, beginning Tuesday night on CBS. Those years that we beat those guys, I mean, he took a lot of beef from us. Mm. Michael Jordan or if it was uh, Elo, I'd hit them all, it don't matter because <laughs> you're the opposition, you're not, you're not my teammate. I mean that was, the, they were our rules and that's the rules the Detroit Pips of what by how we're going to play <laughs> Michael Jordan and uh, you know we kind of played it up a little bit but that's, that's just the way it was back then. Mm. Until he learned how to involve his other players, uh, he couldn't win, especially against us. Once he started learning that and gave up some uh, control over his ball club to a degree, that's when they started winning. And we got old, that was part of it, but still you got to give him credit for recognizing that he couldn't do it himself. When Jordan hit that big shot over Dennis Rodman, um, you kind of started thinking, okay, maybe this is the end. And then he finally figured out he had to get a lot stronger, mm. get his teammates more involved to beat us. And, you know, by that fourth year, we played them again. And, you know, they finally figured out how to beat us. They swept us. I don't know why it didn't hold. I think guys just got older, had different players in. It wasn't quite the group that really held him down before. Every team has their little window of opportunity. Um, we had ours. Could we have won that ne next year? Tough. They had the home court advantage, uh, and we were getting older. There's no question about that. Uh, and you lose a little bit of mental mental edge at that point. You know, they, they were hungrier than we were, and uh, Jordan was changing his game, involving his teammates a little bit more. Pippen was growing up. Um, it became their time. Good points, Bill. That was good points. The league uh, decided that they want to do. Uh, clean up the game, get rid of some of the physical contact, uh, clear out the lane so that the uh, the great players, the great athletes could drive to the basket. That was geared more to help Michael Jordan and the Bulls, and it was certainly the kind of legislation that did not help the Detroit Pistons. Mm. Maybe because of the way he was treated in the league, but he's carrying, you know, it's about who would you come see? Would you come see Rick Mahorn or would you come see Michael Jordan? He can fill the seats up. That's an unbelievable play. Like, wow. So those were the rules. There were there were no secret about the rules. I mean, it was very obvious and very vivid for everybody who was watching. It was just that the Pistons were one of the teams that were willing to do it, where others may have backed away from it. A uh, great video by Endless Media. Uh, definitely comment down below. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like this video. I'm JP. We'll see you in the next video.